It was thumping pain. It was like being hit with a brick or with a sledgehammer. So shingles uh, reflects reactivation or recurrence of the varicella zoster virus, which is a chickenpox virus from childhood that re uh, comes back in, in an adult form along certain nerves. So it comes out as a rash and nerve-related pain, uh, and we refer to this as shingles. So this is the second type of infection that follows chickenpox as a child. So there's two main groups. The first group is the older person. So as we get older, our ability to um, maintain coverage of the uh, virus, which is laying dormant in our, normally in our nerves, uh, it reduces. So as we get older, our chances of developing shingles becomes more prominent. So it's the older population and particularly those over 60. So the, the chances over 60 uh, increase significantly and then over 70 increases again. The second group that develop shingles are those that have low immune systems and they may have a low immune system for many reasons including treatment with chemotherapy, treatment with steroids or other medicines. They also might might get it following a, another type of severe illness which suppresses their immune system so that puts them at risk of having a, a, an episode of shingles. You feel like you've got a blowtorch that's going through your body. You often feel like you're on the outside looking in to life because of the pain. So it's caused by the virus called the chickenpox virus also known as the varicella virus and that's um, ubiquitous really in the community. So most children develop chickenpox if they don't receive a vaccination. So it's felt that about 95% of adults have had been exposed to the virus as a child. Now interestingly now we're vaccinating all the children and so some of the, those children that have been vaccinated 20 and even 30 years ago are now becoming adults and we don't know if they will develop shingles. The thought is that they will develop less severe form of shingles or be less likely to develop shingles. So the symptoms are really uh, initially a, a pain and often the pain comes first with a feeling of uh, general unwellness like a viral illness, a bit tired, um, fatigued, you might have a low grade fever. And then after several days of these symptoms, uh, the definitive rash uh, becomes evident and that's normally in a quite defined area along the the, the length of one nerve. So it'll be a small patch of a rash in the area of the pain. Not everyone gets the rash, but the vast majority develop the rash. And the rash are, are small little blisters that often then um, leak fluid and then they may crust over over a period of three to five to seven days. And these blisters are associated with that pain. So it's a quite a characteristic type of rash. So this can take place anywhere in the body. Um, on the, it's, it's seen on the skin, so it's in the um, muscles and, and, and the skin and soft tissues around the body. Uh, it's commonly on the trunk, so either on the, on the chest region, sometimes in the abdominal region. Some people get it around the face, so particularly in the upper parts of the face, above the eye or here, and also on the leg. People, patients tell me the pain is quite severe and it sort of comes out of the blue and it's severe nerve type pain. So it's often burning, a stinging, shooting type pain, can be a deep aching throb as well and there's a lot of sensitivity. So there's sensitivity around the rash or with clothes and around the skin region in that area. I am the proprietor of Bass Philip Wines in Victoria. I was diagnosed with shingles in early 2006, uh, around about the time of the harvest here. The first symptoms I experienced with this were driving headache. It was like someone tearing at my hair. It was a sort of uh, tense, um, zappy sort of pulling headache and very seriously heavy pain in the head and itchiness all around the top of the head and the neck. Uh, so there is uh, no cure but there is a treatment for the disease. So the, the treatments are along two lines. The first is to um, treat with aggressive um, antiviral medications which are a bit like antibiotics but they're targeting towards the virus and they are recommended to be given within three days of the rash. <clears throat> there is some suggestion you can still get benefit if you take it a little bit longer than that but the natural immune system 
does kick back in and controls the virus. But in most situations, we recommend the antiviral medications in that short term because it shortens the duration and the severity of the condition. Um, there are also then a number of other medications that look at controlling the pain. So we use normal um, pain relief type medications plus nerve type medications to suppress or, or reduce the sensitivity of those nerves. And then the, the third thing is just to observe any complications and particularly this is complications in the tissues where there's inflammation and, and the blisters. So we're making sure you don't get secondary bacterial infections in the skin or you don't get other complications at the skin level or in particular around the eye because the inflammation around the eye can cause some scarring of the outer layers of the eye. So if in this situation they would be referred to a, um, an eye doctor and often given therapy to reduce that inflammation around the eye. Now the impact of that is significant. They, they, people don't sleep well, they're often very irritable, they, they're quite distressed by it and they can't function in a normal way so they may not be able to do their normal activities. So the major problem uh, for this condition for us as pain doctors is that a certain proportion lead to ongoing pain and that pain likely reflects um, to some degree damage to the nerves, both the peripheral nerve into the tissues but also the nerve connections in the spinal cord and even the brain so that person's pain can continue even though the virus is under control and the rash is resolved. We refer to this as post herpetic neuralgia or uh, post shingles pain and this is felt to occur more commonly in the older person and if the person's acute shingles was severe. Uh, so in this situation we would look for recovery in that first sort of three to six week period and if the pain is still persisting between one and three months after the, uh, the rash then we would refer to this as post hepatic neuralgia or post shingles pain. Uh, this is my fourth episode of shingles in my lifetime so far. This one, yes, has been uh, 18 months. 18 months of um, ongoing, never-ending um, pain. It's the worst kind of pain you can have, yes. You don't have a day without it. It's painful, and that's with medication in my system. <laughs> shingles has impacted on every facet of my life. Um, social, emotional, um, family, and, and work. I can't work at the moment. Um, the pain's too bad. The impact on my life, uh, as far as having the shingles, it slowed me right down. I mean, I was home here for three months. I felt like a caged lion. Um, I didn't see anybody. I had a palsy. Looked as though I just had a stroke and consequently also lost my taste buds and my sense of smell entirely. And that lasted nine months. The, the effect of loss of taste and smell was devastating. And it just had a massive effect on my business. And the, the business was falling around, down around my ears. I had no idea where the future was heading.